Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the graphical implications of a unit tax on consumers. With that said, let's get into it. So let's start by drawing our general supply and demand graph. So we have our axes, we have our supply and demand curves, and then we've labeled everything. So once again, price is on the y-axis, quantity is on the x-axis. Supply is the upward sloping blue line and demand is the downward sloping red line. And we've got our equilibrium labeled at P star and Q star. Now, as I said before, in this video, we'll be looking at a unit tax on consumers, which means that this is effectively going to decrease the real income of consumers, which is actually a leftward shift in the demand curve. Demand will shift to the left, and we'll have this new demand curve here. Now that there's two demand curves and I don't want to be confused between them, I'm going to make one of them green. And of course, I'm going to call it the demand after the tax has been imposed. So demand after tax. And we'll notice that our equilibrium has now changed to this point here where we have P star and Q tax. And again, this is where the supply curve, which hasn't changed, intersects the new demand curve, which is demand after tax, which is strictly to the left or lower than the original demand curve. So where's the tax revenue visible on this graph? Well, in order to see that, we need to look at both the price the firms receive and the price the consumers pay because they're not the same anymore. So this P star is actually the price that the firm receives from the consumer when they purchase the good. So we'll denote it by PF or price the firms receive. However, the price that the consumers actually pay is found by following the Q tax all the way up to the original demand curve. And we can denote this as the price the firms pay plus the tax. And this is the price that the consumers pay. So once again, we have the difference between PC and PF, which is your tax. And you can see that in this case, the price the consumers pay is exactly higher than the price the firms receive by the amount of the tax. Now this creates a rectangle right here, and this is actually our tax revenue because the distance between PC and PF is my tax, and my tax times my quantity of units traded is my total revenue for taxes. Now you'll notice that Q tax is strictly less than Q star, and in this case, we're of course gonna have some deadweight loss. That's gonna be represented by this yellow triangle right here, and this will always be the case anytime that we're in disequilibrium where we're not consuming at Q star, a deadweight loss will always occur. And in this case, it's this little yellow triangle right here. Now, if you'd like to see a video on this exact topic, but looking at real numbers and calculations, then absolutely let us know in the comment section. We'll take a look at that exact problem with numbers, if that's something you're interested in. Now, as a heads up, we do have a video on the channel looking at taxes on producers. So if that's something you're interested in instead of taxes on consumers, absolutely check that out. However, you'll notice they're quite similar. It's just the tax incidence that changes. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comment section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.